Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video we will see how you can conduct an online class as an instructor in WizIQ. So the very first step is you will log into the platform as an instructor. Once you log in you will have to go to the top left menu option and you will find the list of live classes under the live classes tab. You can see this is a class which is meant for the current date and time. Let's go ahead and launch the session now. The moment you launch the session, this is the landing page for you as an instructor. You can see that your video is on, there is a live text chat facility just below the video and on the right hand side you will find your workspace area. In case you want to change your device settings then you can click on the device selection option and uh, you can choose your camera device as well as the desired microphone device from here. Make the settings and refresh your page once so that the changes can be applied within the classroom. Now let's get started with the workspace area. You can see that there is a drop down option here from where I can upload various activities into my workspace. The first option you can see here is the YouTube. Now in case you want to play any kind of video which is there on the YouTube within the classroom then this is the feature which you will have to use. So let me paste a YouTube URL here and you will see that a YouTube video will get played within my classroom. Similarly, if I go to the second point, which is the whiteboard, then I can start writing on the top of it. There are a lot of tools on the left hand side which can be utilized. First tool is the colors in case I want to choose uh, pens of different colors. I can choose the tool either pen, brush or highlighter and I can draw anything on my whiteboard. The third option is the shapes using which you can draw various kinds of shapes into the classroom. So you can draw emoticons, you can draw block arrows, grids, solid shapes, flowcharts, chemistry, electrical as well as maps. The fourth option is the transform using which I can move around my objects within the whiteboard in case I want to rotate it or I want to resize the object this is also possible. Fifth option is the hand tool using which I can drag my page up and down. Then the next option is eraser. This is delete shape in case I want to delete any shape from my whiteboard area. This is text option in case I want to write anything using the keyboard. This camera icon is meant for uploading any image into the whiteboard. Once the image gets uploaded I can resize the image and I have an option that I can also write on the top of it. The second last option is the undo option in case I want to undo any of my actions which I performed on the whiteboard and uh, the last option is the redo. The third option here is the content. So in case you want to use uh, any kind of content as an instructor then you can go to the content library, choose the file which you want to play within the classroom and that particular file will get played inside the class and will be visible to all the participants who have joined your live lecture. Now while I'm using my presentation I also have an option that I can highlight specific areas of my presentation and uh, I can start uh, explaining about the slide. The next option here is the media player. You can have your own private video content which can be uploaded on the content library and it can be played within the live classroom. The next option which we have here is the code editor. Now let's assume that uh, you are an organization who is providing training on some sort of software programming languages. So in that case you can use this code editor to teach any kind of programming language. Right now we support JavaScript, HTML and CSS. However, we can also keep on adding more languages. Now this is a collaborative code editor which means that you can give the writing access to your participants and they will also be able to write a code in this particular area which we are calling as the code editor. The last option here for the workspace is the save to PDF. Now in case you want to save your whiteboard work or you want to save uh, your annotations which you've done on the top of a presentation then you can choose those particular tabs and click on confirm. Once you click on confirm you can see that 
your whiteboard work or your presentation annotations will get converted into the form of a PDF file. Now this file can be used later on by your students or by yourself to refer to any of the points which you discussed during the live classroom. At the top you can see there is a recording button which is blinking right now which means we are capturing this lecture. This is the microphone option, this is the webcam option and I can mute or unmute my microphone and I can also switch off and switch on my live video within the live classroom. This is a timer option using which I can keep track of my time and in case I want to extend my lecture I have an option of doing the same. Once I'm done with my lecture I can click on end the session and uh, this will bring my live lecture to an end. This is the polling option using which I can create a poll. Once you have created a poll you can click on publish and immediately each one of the participants will receive a poll wherein they will have to choose one of the options and submit it back to the instructor. Once they submit you will be able to see the results either in the pie chart or in the listed format. The next option here is the layout change. The present layout which we are using in this particular screen is what we are calling as the classic layout but we also have an option wherein you can completely transform this layout and change it to a full screen workspace doesn't matter whether you are using a whiteboard or using you are using a presentation or you are using a video each one of your components which are being used within the workspace area will now be played in a full screen mode we have a third layout which we are calling as the full screen video layout in case uh, you just want to address your audience using the video conferencing then this is a layout which you can choose this is the fourth layout which we are calling as the conference layout wherein you can put multiple people on the video tiles and you can have a live audio video communication with them once we click on this option again it will take us back to the classic layout there is a next option which is the screen share so if I click on the screen share it will ask me whether I want to share my entire screen or I just want to share a particular application window once I have chosen what kind of screen share I want to do I will click on share and then it will start capturing my screen once you are done you can click on stop screen share and you will be back to your online session this is your people list where the list of all the participants will be listed whenever the students gets listed then corresponding to every student you will find four different controls so this is the option which I was talking about when you click on the people tab as an instructor you get to see the list of people who are present in your live session the first option is for webcam the second is for microphone third is for writing control and the last one is for removing somebody from the live classroom and the last icon which you are able to see here is the notification icon and whenever any particular student is raising his hand then you will be able to track all the notification out here. As we have already spoken about the live chat uh, there are two kinds of conversation which can happen here. One is the class conversation another one is the private messages so that in case uh, a student wants to communicate uh, anything in private then he has an option that he can choose the name of the teacher from here and put across his questions in private to the online instructor. Once you are done with your lecture then you can go back to your timer and finally click on end the session. Thank you so much for watching this video tutorial. I hope that this video will help you in conducting an online class in VizIQ.